E-commerce was $450 billion for the transactions last year. It's just, that was going to be too hard to ignore. So I think a lot of companies have tried to get out in front of this, prepare for it. Um, but it's still going to be a challenge, and there's still going to be a little bit of headache in the implementation. Rakesh, have you been planning for this as well? And if so, what have those plans looked like? Yeah, we've been planning for it, and we've actually uh, implemented plans to uh, paying, uh, start paying taxes in uh, states that require us to. So we've been doing this all along for the last uh, two and a half years. Um, and so this isn't anything new for us. I think what this means for other retailers is folks, uh, you know, the smaller players that hadn't been uh, paying these taxes that were sort of skidding by uh, that will now be impacted by this. But I'd say majority of the players, you know, companies that are over the size of 200 employees, uh, over over $100,000 in annual sales had already been uh, paying these taxes to states where they did not have a presence. Paul, how have you been looking at which companies to go with providing technology to help this be less of a headache? There are plenty of them out there. Some of them spiked on the news of this decision getting handed down. Is, is it complicated or are there lots of good solutions out there? You know, I think there are a lot of good solutions out there. I, you know, the good thing is that this didn't happen 10 years ago or even five years ago. I, I think we were all on legacy, legacy sort of custom systems. And, and now we're on out-of-the-box e-commerce systems. It's much easier to get into the business. There are plugins and platforms that help you do this. Um, so, you know, I do think we have an ERP system, um, NetSuite, that we like that's been very helpful. You know, there's obviously a handful of other solutions out there that people can use, um, which is great. That being said, if you're a small business just getting off the ground, as so many e-commerce startups are, you're one, you're two people. It's not necessarily technology implementation that's going to be challenging. It's going to be registering for a business license in each state and taking the time at the end of the month to get, get that right and pay those taxes. And, and the biggest issue for those businesses is maybe once they get all the administration done, is still making sure that's accurate and navigating that properly because that's the most detrimental thing that could happen. Of course, the other big news driver this week has been uh, trade, more potential tariffs looking around the globe. Uh, Rakesh, you recently expanded into China in January. Do you expect everything that's going on between the U.S. and China right now to impact your business and your expansion plans there? I mean, for, for us, uh, the trade tariffs haven't really uh, done anything negatively yet. Um, but if, if these uh, trade wars continue, um, you, you know, ch with China doing more retaliatory tariffs and, uh, and Trump continuing to uh, stay on that course, uh, this could impact uh, what we pay for products, what consumers actually pay for products. Ultimately, uh, it's the consumer that, that need, uh, has to suffer from the increased tariffs on any of the products that get imported. Today, garments, uh, apparel are not being uh, uh, taxed, but that could that could change uh, very quickly. Paul, I'm curious how you've been navigating this challenging environment when it comes to distribution. Amazon is trying to push hard into apparel. Uh, there are all of these different models around, you know, either buying one off or or subscribing to packages of clothing. Right. Uh, you mentioned that there are a number of technology platforms trying to ease at least the ERP, the back end systems end of it, but are you finding yourself um, pulled more into one ecosystem or another, or, or is it still a healthy time to kind of go it alone? Uh, I, I think you're pulled in a number of different directions, but I think today to be a successful retailer, you still need to be in the uh, omni-channel business. Um, granted, the majority of our business is, is e-commerce, um, but we still have a network of our own stores and the national retailers throughout the country. Um, we sell a luxury dress shirt. Um, we think that fits better, feels better, and lasts longer than anything else in the closet, but we, we do that specifically um, on our own product, which I think helps shield us from some of you know, Amazon and some of those other competitors. So it's an important piece, I think, to be involved in, in a handful of different channels, and, and for us, even this legislation might even be helpful for us with some of our higher-end specialty men's retailers that no longer see our e-commerce site as competitive, um, but now in a playing, playing field, and they might be more willing to, to take us. And, and our goal is to get our shirts on people's backs because then that's when we think they become customers. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.